Praise the Lord, young people. It's Brother Torrance coming to you. Glad to see you back. Going, getting the word. Um, just wanted to come to you and um, open up in word of prayer before we start the word. Um, before you do anything, please grab your Bibles. All right, let us pray. Dear humble, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to bring the word. And thank you for the opportunity to bring it through um, the social media thing that we're using. And Heavenly Father, thank you for being able to put it in YouTube and use the iMovie to put together the message, Lord. I ask that you continue to undertake for the kids, undertake for the young people, undertake for those that are in authority over them, and Heavenly Father, give them wisdom and encouragement and strength, Lord, to continue to push forward. Undertake for the young people as we finish out the school year, Heavenly Father, everything be done decent well. Prepare for the summer, and uh, continue to undertake for safety and protection and health, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray and good things. Amen. Enjoy the word. Let's learn the books of the Bible, the books that you should know. Let's learn where they are, hide them in your heart. Let's yeah. learn the books of the Bible, books of the, Bible. the books that you should know. Let's That's learn right. where they are, hide them in your heart. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Say Joshua. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel. First and Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah. Keep going. Esther, Job, and the Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Uh, yeah. to another Saturday night Bible class. Today's review would be on the book of Joshua. So up until this point, we have covered five books. Those are the first five books in the Old Testament under the division of law. Now we're going into the division of history, and we're going to start off with the very first book on history, which is Joshua. Joshua is the Old Testament book number six. It was written by Joshua and possibly another person or his scribe. It was written in 1375 and it covers a period between 1400 BC to 1375 BC. So what is the book of Joshua about? Well, it contains um, the beginnings of the story of Israel as a nation and it contains the first events to take place after the Exodus. Famous scriptures found in Joshua. The first one is Joshua 1 9, and it states, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua. And second scripture, Joshua 6 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. Now let's look at some of the famous stories covered in the book of Joshua. The first story is Joshua and the troops surrounding Jericho and how they blew trumpets and shouted, which made the walls fall down. And that's in Joshua chapter 6. The second story is the story of Rahab, the harlot who protected the spies of Israel. So she and her family were saved. And she married into one of the families in Israel. It's also covered in Joshua 6. 
And lastly, the story of how the sun stood still in the sky so Joshua and his men could see to fight. And that comes from Joshua chapter 10, 12 through 14. Isn't God amazing? Now let's take a look at the important points in the book of Joshua. And we're going to break that down into three parts. The first chapter, first eight chapters of Joshua cover the battle for Israel, which was, or that's the first battle, which is Jericho. They also cover the battle to win Ai, which gave the nation two pieces of land. In Joshua 9 through chapters 9 through 12, the army continues fighting with Joshua as their leader. They conquer and obtain more of the promised land with one great miracle being how the sun stopped in the sky to give Joshua and the men an opportunity to fight. Then in the rest of the chapters, that's 13 through 24, Joshua and his team divide the lands they had conquered among the tribes. And in the last two chapters, 23 and 24, Joshua gives a farewell address and he dies at the age of 110 years old. Joshua was a great military leader. He was able to conquer a lot of lands for the nation of Israel. And he didn't do it himself. He did it all through Christ, through God, who helped him conquer them all. Isn't God amazing? Praise the Lord, young people. I'm Sister Citra, and tonight I'll be bringing to you the memory verse portion of our lesson. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you thanking you, Lord, for tonight and for the young people and everyone that are tuning in. Lord, we ask that you just undertake and hide the teachers behind the cross that we bring forth your word, Lord. And we thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> tonight, we're going to be coming, uh, bringing to you the memory verse tonight, and that'll be coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. So everyone, get your Bibles. All right. Get your Bibles. We're going to do a quick Bible charge. I know we haven't done that in a while, uh, but we're going to try to see if Sister Citra still has some speed here to get through so that she can get through um, to quickly find the uh, the, the memory verse and word of God. So, all right, Bible's up and charge. We're going to Ephesians chapter six, verse one. All right, not as quick as it used to be. And one more page. All right, I got it. Hope you all have it too. We're gonna read it from God's word first. Then we're gonna drill. All right. And it is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, again, that is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drill that verse with you. Um, we're going to go ahead and go through that. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. All right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right? Now, I know uh, if you have to look down, if you have to look at your work, go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to hold that up. I'm going to go with you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right? Um, I'm going to let you do one more time with your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. All right. Now we're going to put the Bible down. And we're going to, I'm not going to ask you to close it, but I'm going to actually put your hand over it. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we hope that uh, you all take God's word, even from the from the memory verses that we give you each and every week uh, and the books of the Bible, 
uh, that you move to hide God's word in your heart. Uh, it is so important that we do that because each and every day you guys are faced with challenges as I am faced with challenges and we certainly need that word of God to sustain us. All right. All right. We thank you for tuning in and joining us tonight. All right. As we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now. And uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet. Um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The Word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his Son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There is a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelation 20, 15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23 is where that scripture is found. Okay. So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay. He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, pardoned for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's Book of Life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay? For again, for the wages of sin is death. But, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter one, verse 12. Okay, so we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, 
we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to... You have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission. Uh, the leadership in this group, um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return. But a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you've started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.